Good morning. Today is the 11th day of January in this 2021st year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a bitterly cold day today. That is, it's in the 30s. That's pretty cold for us. You really feel it in your bones when you're used to that warm weather. And uh, blue skies, sun, uh, but the prospects of temperatures higher than the 40s is not going to be very good today. I uh, hope it's a little better wherever you are, though I know it's a pretty cold spell up north. Uh, make the most of it. A reading from, John, from uh, Mark's Gospel in the first chapter. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. <clears throat> and they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one with authority and not as the scribes. Uh, just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed him and cried with a loud voice, and came out of him, and they were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus. A reading from Discipline and Discovery by Albert Edward Day. Nothing will help us more to make of these disciplines what they ought to be than a continuing remembrance of Jesus. He was the most wisely disciplined person in history. Name the discipline one by one, and then recall his perfect illustration of their meaning and purpose. One obedience not my will be done my meat and drink is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work as paul tillich said jesus lived in unbroken unity with god and yet sought nothing for himself by that unity two simplicity he lived simply boxes have holes and birds have of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. There was no effort to make an impression. He refused the spectacular. He spoke the language of the people. There was no, no pose of any kind. He kept silent when he did not know the answers. Of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son. Three, humility. Why do you call me good? No one is good but God. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Four, frugality. How hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For our sakes, he became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be rich. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Those who wear soft raiment are in king's houses. Frugal in food, he fasted long days in the wilderness. Frugal in sleep, he spent whole nights in prayer alone with God. Frugal in personal relationships, he loved people with God alone. He loved people, but could get along without them if his truth, if his truth offended them. Will ye also go away? Generosity. He gave everything to God, everything, his days and nights, his dreams and deeds, his labors, and his life itself were God's. He gave himself without stint to people, sharing with them his truth, ministering to their souls, healing their sickness, listening to their questions, 
for many were coming and going, and there was no leisure even to eat. He had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Truthfulness. Even his enemies had to say, We know that you are true. You do not regard the position of men, but teach the way of God. Deceit, evasion, double talk, ambiguity, exaggeration, flattery, guile never appeared in his life, even when, by common strategy, they promised advantage to his selfless cause. Purity, not even a look in the direction of evil, no mixed motives, no service adulated by sly self-interest, nothing that did not fit the concept of God likeness. He only he not only said, Blessed are the pure of heart, he was that. Charity. Paul's deathless portrayal of charity had Jesus as its model. Every quality of life that good usage uh, you uh, usage names charity was Christ in abundance, gentleness, graciousness, quick forgiveness, bountifulness, courtesy, self-sacrifice, universal goodwill, channeling God's love toward all people. Of all this, Jesus was the perfect incarnation. Nor were all these superlative qualities of life sheer native endowment. They were his because God was in him, but God was in him because he did what the rest of us must do by dedication and discipline, keep one's life open to God. And let us pray. Lord, as the author suggests, help us, as your Christ did, to be open to you, to be open to your calling to us into service, to be open to doing your will and not our own, to be open to being generous with the gifts you have blessed us with, to be open to the fullness of your grace that gives us hope for the living of this day and each and every day until we are at last brought to your side. I thank you, O Lord, for this day. And though it be cold, it is a day, a gift indeed, for us to have our life and being. I thank you for the opportunities of this simple ministry of sharing your word and of sharing thoughts and reflections upon that word each day. It has been indeed, I pray, a blessing to myself and I pray it is to some of you as well. And I thank you, O oh Lord, for giving me this opportunity. And we ask your strength and encouragement to be with all who may be discouraged by life for there are many who are so, not because only of this pandemic that inundates our world and restricts our life and our being, our comings and goings that has created conflict in families and among loved ones. Lord, help us to get a grasp upon it and to move on in our life and in this world to do good things for the sake of others. And O oh Lord, be with those that are ill, those whom we remember this day, for Hazel, and for Nancy, for Sam, for Becky, for Sarah, for Tom and Nikki, and Lisa, and for JT, for Miriam, and for Bill, for each that we hold precious in our hearts and our lives that we commend to your keeping especially those remembered now. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, giving you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore.